The screen is dark, only the faint sound of typing echoes. A distorted voice whispers, Somewhere out there, your information is already for sale. Flashes of breaking news headlines burst across the screen. Millions of accounts hacked, stolen data found on dark web. A shadowy figure sits before a wall of glowing monitors, the cold blue light revealing nothing but the outline of their hands on a keyboard. Eyes dart rapidly across strange black and green pages filled with code, login prompts, and cryptic symbols. They call it the hidden side of the internet, a place where normal rules don't apply. For a moment, the screen glitches with flashes of eerie symbols, scrambled text, and sites that look nothing like the web most people know. And if you don't know what you're doing, it could cost you everything. A heartbeat rises in the background. This is not your everyday Google search. This is the dark web. And today, the journey begins to learn how to access it safely, for educational purposes only. The words how to access the dark web safely glitch into view before fading away. Journalists type frantically. Whistleblowers send encrypted files. Activists march through city streets. The dark web isn't just for criminals. Many people use it for legitimate reasons protecting sources, avoiding censorship, researching security threats. It's like a library with a hidden basement. Not everyone who goes there breaks the law, but the shadows can be dangerous. Accessing the dark web without protection is like walking into a battlefield with no armor. Your IP address could be exposed, your webcam could be hijacked, your accounts drained in minutes. Hackers, scammers, even law enforcement watch these networks. One wrong click and you could be a target. The dark web exists inside special networks, the most famous being Tor, short for the onion router. Like peeling an onion, Tor hides your connection in layers, bouncing it through multiple countries before it reaches its destination. It makes you harder to track, but not invisible. Safety steps matter. Before taking even one step, you need armor, a secure VPN, a trusted device, and the official Tor browser. A VPN encrypts your data before Tor even sees it, hiding your real location from your provider and anyone watching the network. But remember this, the dark web itself is not illegal, yet many of its activities are. Go looking for the wrong thing and trouble will find you. In its shadows, you'll find marketplaces for drugs, fake passports, stolen data, and hacking services. Most are traps, many run by law enforcement, others by scammers waiting for a victim. What follows will be a safe, step-by-step -step journey to understand how this hidden world works and how to protect yourself from it. The cursor hovers over the Tor browser download button, a heartbeat pounding in the background, but the click hasn't happened yet. Black screen, silence. The mouse clicks, a download begins. The Tor browser installer appears, its logo, a simple onion, glowing faintly on the screen. Tor works by bouncing your connection through multiple volunteer-run servers around the world. Each stop encrypts your data differently, hiding your real path from spies, hackers, or anyone who might be watching. But even Tor has weaknesses. If your device is infected with malware, no amount of encryption will save you. A secure, freshly installed operating system is your safest choice. Some experts use Tails, a portable OS you can run from a USB stick, leaving no trace when you shut down. Others rely on hardened Linux distributions built for privacy. The first rule is simple, never use your personal computer for this journey. Once Tor is installed, the browser opens with a purple screen and a connect button. One click and your internet route is scrambled like a maze. Within seconds, the browser connects to the Tor network, a digital underworld now at your fingertips. But before you explore, another layer of defense is crucial. Disable scripts and plugins. These can leak your real IP address without warning. Inside Tor settings, a security slider lets you choose safest. It blocks risky elements on websites, but also makes pages look plain and stripped down. This isn't the normal web. Links are long strings of random characters ending with onion. You can't just Google them. You need trusted directories shared only in certain forums or by word of mouth. But trust is rare here. Many safe link lists are poisoned with scam sites waiting for the careless. One wrong step and your screen could fill with pop-ups demanding money or worse, ransomware locking every file you have, your defense. 
Research every site before you visit it. Double check URLs character by character. And never, ever download files from unknown sources. The dark web has its own search engines, but they're crude, limited, and sometimes dangerous. Onions can hide many things, but some hide traps. You're about to take your first step into this hidden network. Your VPN is running. Tor is connected. A single link waits in the address bar. The cursor hovers over the enter key. The heartbeat returns. The link opens. The page loads slowly, layer by encrypted layer. A plain black background, white text, no ads, no flashy design. On the surface, it looks harmless. But every pixel here could be a clue or a trap. The site is a trusted directory known in security circles for sharing only vetted Onion links. Each category is carefully labeled, forums, marketplaces, whistleblower sites, privacy tools. But even in a trusted directory, danger lurks. Criminals mimic real sites with near-identical URLs swapping just one letter. A simple typo could take you to a clone designed to steal passwords. You scan the page, fingers hovering above the keyboard. No click should be careless, you copy a link into the address bar. The site you enter is a privacy-focused forum. Usernames here are random strings, no photos, no personal info. Conversations are about encryption methods, news leaks, and data breaches. A pinned post warns newcomers, assume everything here could be a lie. It's the first rule of survival in the dark web. Question every source. You read threads quietly, not posting a word. Lurking keeps you invisible. Sharing personal details here is like bleeding in shark-infested waters. Suddenly you notice a thread offering free security tools. Tempting, but dangerous. Free software here can hide Trojans that give hackers remote control of your device. The safest move is to download nothing. If you need tools, only use ones verified by the official Tor project or respected cybersecurity researchers. Another post catches your eye, a list of whistleblower platforms. These sites let insiders share information anonymously, often to expose corruption or crimes. Some are operated by major news organizations with secure submission systems. You realize that not everything here is criminal. The dark web also shelters journalists, activists, and people in oppressive regimes who need to speak without fear. But it's a thin line. For every noble cause, there's a predator hiding in the shadows. You close the forum, hand resting on the mouse. The next step will take you deeper. The air feels heavier. Somewhere in this maze, you'll see what most people never imagine. And you'll have to keep your guard up every second. You take a deep breath before clicking the next link. The address looks harmless, but so do most traps. The page fades in a black screen with a single blinking cursor. No menu, no navigation. Just a field asking for a username and password. It's a locked marketplace. Rumors say these are where stolen credit cards, leaked databases, and fake passports are sold. You know better than to try to enter? Logging in could mark you as a potential buyer and put you under law enforcement surveillance. Instead, you back out slowly, like stepping away from a wild animal. Next, you follow a link to an information hub. It's filled with long lists of onion addresses, but next to each one is a verified tag. Still, verification here is based on trust, not law. A green check mark isn't a guarantee, it's just someone's word. You click a whistleblower archive. Documents load, court records, leaked corporate emails, hidden government memos. Some are redacted, others are raw and unfiltered. Each page feels heavy, like it's not meant for public eyes. This is the double-edged sword of the dark web. It's a place where truth can surface, but also where lies can spread unchecked. In another corner, you find an encrypted chat room. Messages appear in real time, disappearing after seconds. No names, just strings of numbers. A user posts a warning, feds in here tonight, log out. Your heart rate spikes. Even if you're not doing anything illegal, being in the wrong room at the wrong time could cause trouble. You exit instantly. The silence after leaving is deafening. Your hands hover over the keyboard, deciding the next move. You're learning the most important lesson. Safety isn't just about software. It's about judgment, patience, and knowing when to walk away. The deeper you go, the less forgiving mistakes become. You feel the shadows closing in, pressing against your screen. 
you've only just begun to see what's out there, and the real danger is still ahead. The air feels colder as you move deeper. Your cursor hovers over a link with no description, just random characters. You click. The screen loads slowly, as if testing your patience. A marketplace emerges, but this one is different. No flashy graphics, no bold claims, just plain text listings. And yet, each line whispers danger. Full identity package, $500. Corporate access credentials, negotiable. Live exploit kit, serious buyers only. Your eyes scan the page without clicking anything. Even hovering too long on a link can trigger tracking scripts. You keep your VPN and Tor browser updated, but still, there's no such thing as invincible. At the bottom, a strange listing catches your attention. It's not selling, it's giving away. A free download link labeled Essential Security Tools? It's bait. One click could plant ARAT a remote access trojan, giving someone complete control of your device. This is how beginners vanish into digital black holes. You back away and close the tab. Next, you reach a hidden forum. Threads have titles like Upsec Mistakes to Avoid and Anonymous Communication 101. The advice is sharp, almost paranoid. Never type anything that reveals your location. Never reuse usernames from other sites. Never trust a stranger, even one who's helped you before. A veteran user posts a story. They once ignored a warning and clicked a link from a friend. Within minutes, their IP address was exposed. They were offline for months, rebuilding their setup from scratch. The lesson is clear, the dark web is not forgiving. Every click is a calculated risk. Every interaction is a roll of the dice. You realize that safety ice NT just about what you do, it s about what you refuse to do. Some doors are better left closed. And as you stare at your darkened screen, you know the next part of this journey will push you to the edge of that choice. The question is, will you be ready to walk away? Your screen is black, except for a blinking cursor. It's time to leave. The safest way is not just to close the browser, it's to vanish without a trace. First, you shut down every open tab. Then you clear all session data inside Tor. No cache. No history, no saved logins. You disable your VPN, but only after Tor has fully closed. This prevents your real IP from slipping through. You reboot your device, knowing some threats live in memory until restart. When your system comes back, you open a secure cleaner tool. It overwrites temporary files so nothing can be recovered. This isn't paranoia, it's survival. Because the dark web isn't just about what you see. It's about who might be watching you while you see it. You check your network monitor, no strange connections, no hidden uploads. Still, your pulse doesn't slow. A safe exit isn't complete until you cut all ties. You power off your machine completely. The hum of the fan fades and the room falls silent. But silence can be deceptive. Your phone buzzes. A new, unknown number. It's a text. One sentence only. We saw you leave. You freeze. The dark web may be closed on your screen, but in some way, it may still be open in your life. And now you wonder, did you really leave it, or did it just follow you? fade to black.